Well, hello there and good morning. It's Thursday, May 16th, and you're watching News Channel Nebraska. My name's Eric McKay. The Grand Island Fire Department is taking steps to connect with the city's growing Hispanic population. Chief Corey Schmidt says the department's working to offer tours of its facilities in Spanish. He says the idea came from within the department, adding that staff members are working on the logistics end. Schmidt says they're also focusing on recruiting and they have positions available. You don't need experience. What, what we're looking for is good people that are hard workers and want to learn how to be a firefighter because you don't need any past experience. You just have to have a strong desire to, to help other people. And those are the, are the types we're, we're looking for. And, and if you're bilingual, it's a definite plus for us. Schmidt says there's no need to be bilingual, though, but he says having that skill helps the department improve its services. He says the next recruiting event will help will happen sometime in late June or early July. According to Data USA, about 33 percent of Grand Island residents are Hispanic. A Norfolk man arrested this week after authorities say he exposed himself to a teenage boy walking home from school. Police say they spoke with the boy and his father, who say a man made lewd gestures to them. The teenager said while walking home from school, he passed an apartment complex near 10th Street and Park Avenue and saw a man outside with a dog. The teenager says when the man saw him, he put his dog inside and exposed himself. Police arrested 57-year-old Francisco Sabrino Diaz on suspicion of public indecency. He's currently housed in the Madison County Jail. The Grand Island Casino Resort is on track to open early next year. Elite Casino Resort celebrated a ceremonial beam signing event yesterday. That marked the installation of the final beam in the complex placed at the highest point of the building. Construction started back in November. The new facility will include 750 slot machines, 20 table games, a 162-room hotel, along with a full-service salon and spa and multiple restaurants. A former Gage County Correctional Officer is in jail after authorities say he pointed a gun at a pregnant woman. It happened in Beatrice last month. 47-year-old Adam Hutchison jailed on felony firearm, assault and terroristic threat charges. Police say Hutchison was heard on a recording making threatening statements during an argument. The woman told police Hutchison pointed a gun at her when she tried to leave. Hutchison being held on $250,000 bond pending his next court hearing later this month. The Gage County Sheriff's Office has Hutchison resigned following his arrest. This week is National Police Week, a service held to honor fallen and active law enforcement officers of Lincoln County on Wednesday. The ceremony began with the presentation of the colors. Police then presented a rifle salute to honor those who've given their lives to protect the country and Lincoln County. Lastly, a wreath was presented to honor past and present officers. Police say they appreciate the sentiment of the event. It feels good to know the community supports us, that we have such a nice place to come to, to memorize, you know, remember people, and to gather with old friends and family and just kind of think about the things in the past and things in the future too. This year marks the 62nd year for the National Peace Officers Memorial Day, first established by President John F. Kennedy. HUD has awarded Nebraska affordable housing agencies over $77 million in federal funds for housing choice vouchers. The grants were announced by the Department of Housing and Urban Development this week. 23 different public housing authorities across the state are getting money to help keep up with the rising cost of rent. The Omaha Housing Authority getting nearly $36 million. Douglas County awarded $8.2 million. Fremont getting nearly $800,000. Elsewhere in the state, the Norfolk Housing Authority getting over $1 million. Kearney is getting $659,000. Beatrice being awarded $650,000. While Scotts Bluff County is receiving over $1.9 million. Well, before they had a chance to fall in, Nebraska Democrats and Independent Senate candidate Dan Osborne are falling out. At the same time, Osborne says he doesn't know who he's voting for for president. Joe Jordan has more. Welcome to my humble abode. 
That's right. Senate hopeful Dan Osborne is talking to reporters from inside his suburban Omaha garage, insisting his independent race against Republican Senator Deb Fisher is no long shot because one poll says so and adding he's raised over a million dollars. When I first started this campaign, uh, you know, no one really believed in me. A couple people did. But, uh, you know, now this campaign, it has momentum. He's also got the Nebraska Democratic Party furious. The only way that we're going to win statewide is with independents and Democrats coming together. As chair, I know that. That was Jane Kleb, the head of the Nebraska Democratic Party last October, confirming in an exclusive interview with News Channel Nebraska that Dan Osborne was likely to get their support. So there's a possibility that the, that the candidate running against Deb Fisher won't be a Democrat. It might be an independent, but the Democratic Party would be behind uh, Osborne. There's a possibility that we will support Dan as an independent, as a party. But today, all that changed. I will not be accepting the endorsement of any politician in either party here in Nebraska. Kleb then firing back that Osborne has told the Democratic Party that he wants the party's endorsement, adding Osborne is going back on his word. I fully plan on being a true independent. An independent who won't talk about this. Who are you voting for for president? Well, I, <laughs> I haven't really decided yet. I don't, I don't think I have earned my, earned my vote at this point in time. When do you think you'll make that decision? Well, it could be when I'm driving to the, the, the poll. You don't think the voters should know before that who you're voting for for president? Well, I don't, I don't really understand why it's so important that uh, people want to know who I'm running for president or voting for president because I'm focused on this campaign and I'm focused on getting into the United States Senate. Do you not want to say who, who you might vote for for president because you alienate the other half? Yeah, that, no, 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 not at all. Are you really undecided about yeah. who you're voting for for president? Yeah, why is, the, why is that hard to believe? When I go out and talk to people, people are frustrated really with the two choices that we do have and I, 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 I feel the same sentiment. You had a question? As for his blow up with the Democrats, they are now looking for a write-in candidate against Osborne and Fisher. In Omaha, Joe Jordan, News Channel, Nebraska. Parts of the South likely in for significant and considerable flash flooding. Several rounds of storms set to pummel waterlogged areas today and tomorrow. Forecasters saying the result will be a nightmare. Amy Kiley has more. Stay vigilant. Uh, there's actually another uh, storm system uh, that is slated to be moving through Louisiana. Some forecasters are calling it a nightmare scenario for weather. Southern states are already waterlogged from this month's severe weather. Now some areas could get as much as three inches of rain per hour during new rounds of storms. Forecasters say parts of Texas, Louisiana and Mississippi could see significant flash flooding today. Storms could stretch into Alabama, Georgia, and Florida tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it was a little harrowing. Some communities in the path of these new storms are still picking up the pieces from previous ones. We have been through several hurricanes here and um, through all of the cleanup and stuff that we've done. This is probably the worst I've ever seen this facility in 20 years. He's talking about this baseball field in Louisiana's West Baton Rouge Parish. It's damaged from a deadly storm Monday. So is this man's nearby home. I mean, we're lucky that, yeah, it didn't, the roof didn't cave in more than I guess it already has. Houston's Hobby Airport has a freshly repaired runway after a lightning strike Monday. And in Tallahassee, Florida, residents on one street say debris trapped them at home Sunday. It was a lot of pulling branches and getting the hedge trimmers out. Unfortunately, we don't have chainsaw, so it took a lot of hand sawing. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. With reports of bird flu back in the news, there's rising concern about how the virus is transmitted and exactly who is at risk. Libby Randall spoke to veterinarians about the precautions they're taking. Avian influenza, also known as bird flu, continues to be a topic of conversation among many people, including veterinarians. We're required every three years to take uh, continuing education, you know, mandated by the USDA, uh, basically in prevention and mitigation of foreign animal diseases. As an associate veterinarian with Circle P Veterinary Services, 
Kieran Hartley says while they are trained to identify and treat diseases like this among animals, some clients are concerned about catching it themselves. But he assures them of the low level risk. There have been cases of bird flu or avian influenza that have, you know, affected people. Um, at this point, you know, a lot of those are kind of isolated insulin incidents, excuse me, um, you know, with people working very closely with, you know, an affected species, people, you know, like veterinarians uh, or, you know, poultry workers, things like that, who have constant contact. Right now, experts say the newer cases are still isolated to dairy cows, but can put other animals at risk. It is affecting dairy cattle, but it's not nearly as deadly to them as it is to, uh, to, uh, to poultry. As a matter of fact, we've not seen any deaths from uh, or very few or, or, or no deaths from this from, from dairy cattle. A vet's advice is simple. Stay protected when handling at-risk animals. Mitigating, you know, us bringing, you know, diseases onto a property that we may be having on our clothes or boots or, you know, trucks or on our person. And then also making sure that anything that we, you know, encounter on property stays on property. A trip to the grocery store was a little less expensive last month. Yesterday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released inflation data showing that grocery prices fell 0.2 percent from March to April. The drop comes after years of price increases, followed by months of prices staying flat. Now, the slight dip is welcome relief, but grocery prices still higher than they were a year ago. Since last April, they've gone up 1.1 percent overall. It's not all bad news, though. During that time, some items did get cheaper. Cost of apples down 13%, eggs down 9%. Other products like ham, cheese, coffee, and seafood were also less expensive. Mother Nature could be offering an assist to firefighters battling those massive wildfires up in Canada in the form of cooler air and some humidity. Later this week, it's a short but welcome reprieve for those in the flames path. Meredith Wood has the latest. The fire looked like it was getting real close real fast. The wind was changing direction. Firefighters could get a helping hand from Mother Nature later this week as a slow moving storm moves in with cooler weather and some humidity. While that reprieve won't last, it will be welcome news for those battling and running from the fires. The Canadian Interagency Fire Centre says around 130 wildfires are burning in Canada, dozens of which are considered out of control. Thousands have been forced to evacuate in the province of Alberta as flames move closer and communities are blanketed with thick smoke. Everything was covered in uh, burnt ambers and whatnot, so it's time to get out. That same area experienced a catastrophic wildfire back in 2016 dubbed the Beast. As residents rush to leave their homes, I know that this will bring back difficult memories. This evacuation is a stark reminder that our province lives alongside the threat of wildfires and other national disasters. Tens of thousands of acres are scorched from a fire in Manitoba and a massive wildfire in British Columbia has forced thousands there to evacuate. Smoke from all of those fires has moved south with large swaths of the U.S. under air quality alerts Wednesday. It's like a fog. It's cloudy. And experts say the U.S. can expect air quality to continue to be affected this summer as fire season ramps up. The days of long summers with hot temperatures and no smoke, um, those may not be very common anymore. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. As high schoolers across the country graduate, it's a good time to talk to your kids about drugs, vaping, and alcohol. But how do you have that conversation? Well, as Casey Wannenberg explains, a unique new video featuring Nebraska teens tries to help parents with that question. 21% of seniors currently use vapes. Ever wonder what's going through a teen's mind? What we really need to start figuring out is why. This video featuring Elgin, Nebraska high school students aims to inform the public Home life could be bad or peer pressure. And in particular, parents about alcohol, drugs, and vaping. I think it sends a message on a problem that a lot of teenagers face these days. Senior Blake Hen agreed to participate in this video, which is a partnership among several organizations, including the school, law enforcement, and North Central District Health. The more I just kind of dive into hearing what they have to say is they really want those conversations from their parents, whether it relates to drugs and alcohol, whether it's healthy relationships. But that conversation can feel uncomfortable. Dempster recommends turning up your hearing 
and turning down the judgment. I feel like the number one thing that we could do as parents is just provide a safe place. Whether it's, you know, our body language or our eyes, you know, how we allow that safe place is really something that is going to be in tune with your kids too. The nation is currently facing its deadliest drug epidemic in history, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Officials say fentanyl laced into fake prescription drugs is one of the main culprits. Dempster emphasizes that it's important to have that conversation, even if you think your child might not listen. I think if we hold on to that notion of like, oh, that feels so much better now that we talked about it, we could really create some great change in our communities and our families. Find yourself with better people. Change that Hen agrees. I think parents should sit down with their children and let them know about these things. Could start with a simple conversation. Bad it is for you? Surrounding yourself with people you would want to be around that have a good influence on you. Uh, to know that you're stronger than these problems that are going on. And you can check out the student's full video under this story at newschannelnebraska.com. Reporting for News Channel Nebraska, I'm Casey Wannenberg. An annual summer reading program debuting a new format allowing readers to choose their own summer adventure. Enrollment in Norfolk Public Library Summer Reading Challenge began Monday. Participants will get to do the familiar time-based challenge of getting 20 hours of reading in over the summer, but this year they also have the option of choosing different reading adventures. Library officials say the new challenges hopefully offer more flexibility for those who haven't been able to participate before. We do know not everyone is a reader who has 20 hours of time in their summer, looking at the busy parents especially, or people who work odd shifts. And so that and children sometimes need support while they're reading. The summer program also features three different creative contests, art, coloring, and creative writing. Bourne says they found ways to get participants of all ages involved. But if you've got those younger kids who are creative and you want to assist them in creating something adventure themed, whether it's a diorama, a painting, whatever that might look like, a collage, um, they, get, they get to do that too. And they do that with family help. So the family entry is new and that we're looking forward to seeing what the little kids can bring. The summer's events begin with the Golden Sower Kid Fest on May 31st, where kids will get the chance to meet authors and take part in writing sessions and workshops. All of the programming is free. More information can be found on the Norfolk Library's website or in person. More news next. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.